In the spirit of disruption, I'm going to be a little disruptive. So I want you all to stand up. Please, everybody stand up. We're going to do an exercise that's called the Hindu squat. And I guarantee you that no one here... Well, maybe I should ask. Has anyone ever heard of a Hindu squat? Oh, there are a few. Well, I'd spoken Mumbai, India to 500 Hindus and no one had heard of it. So... <laughs> Uh, but it's good you have. So anyway, put your hands right out in front of you and pull them back real, real tight and then bend down and touch the floor or just sit on the seat there. Yep. Okay. Now, once again, let's do it again. Bring it in and then down here. Now, when we bring it in, I want you to go boom and then come down like that. Okay, really loud. Boom! And then go down and touch the floor. Then boom! Go down and touch the floor. And then boom! And go down and touch the floor. And then boom! And go down and touch the floor. One more time. Boom! And touch the floor. Okay. Great. Now you can be seated. Now your brains are ready to learn. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is how exercise is really for our brains. Physical exercise turns our brains on. And all the wonderful side effects that we get help our body be healthy. I <clears throat> first learned about the power of exercise when I was doing my residency in psychiatry in Boston at the time of the Boston Marathon's explosion with Bill Rogers and everybody in Boston was running we began to see patients who had to stop running for the first time in their lives with an injury. First thing that happened, they got depressed. Then I began to see some people come in and say, look, I can no longer pay attention. I can no longer uh, plan well. I'm procrastinating for the first time in my life. And these were professors from MIT and Harvard and industry leaders that had never experienced uh, what we now call attention deficit disorder. Uh, but they were self-medicating with their daily exercise. And this changed and led me to be interested in exercise as a treatment for a lot of disorders. We knew that it, uh, from the time of Hippocrates that exercise was a good treatment for depression. Uh, and I began to say that a bout of exercise was like, like taking a little bit of Prozac and a little bit of Ritalin. This was solidified uh, some years later when a study came out of Duke University Medical School who had been really on to this whole thing of exercise, making our emotions better, improving our depression, improving anxiety, improving our aggression. But they did this study looking at 100 patients who came into Duke uh, and divided them into three different groups. All of these people were sedentary. The first group, they started on Zoloft, increasing doses of Zoloft. The next group, they, they put into an exercise program four times a week for 30 minutes. And the third group, they did both, uh, medicine and exercise. What they found after four weeks is that all their depressive scores dropped to the same level. And at the end of the fourth month, which is uh, how long the uh, experiment went, the changes had, had remained. And so this kept me interested in exercise as a treatment. But then I learned about this school in Naperville, Illinois uh, in 2003 that led me to write my book, Spark which has given me the purpose and mission of changing our education system, bringing back play and exercise as a treatment modality or as a stimulant modality for all of our kids and uh, all of us. And Naperville had 19,000 students, and they had evolved over a 20-year period this wonderful PE program that was fitness-based, and it was every day. So the kids were spending 45 minutes, all of them, moving and grooving. Well, what got them national recognition is that 3% of their children were overweight. And it was a time when 33% of our kids were overweight. In 7,500 children in the high school, there was not an obese child to be found. Remarkable. 
But what really got me on an airplane to go there was that some years before they had taken the TIMS test, the International Science and Math test, that every country takes every three years to rate and see how they're doing on science and math. And the U.S. is usually in the low to mid-teens. Uh, and they took it as a country. And they came in number one in the world in science and number six in math. So I jumped on an airplane, went there, and began to, to, to put together the science of exercise and its effect, not only for mental health issues, but for cognition. We began to take this uh, idea to other schools, went to an inner city school in Charleston, South Carolina, where they had no uh, resources, one gymnasium, one uh, PE teacher. She set up eight different stations in the gym, had her uh, fourth to eighth graders uh, come in every morning for 30 minutes, had them play basketball at one station, double dutch jump row to another, uh, pogo stick, hula hoops. They, they kept rotating, so the novelty was there. What they found in the first four months was a 83% drop in discipline problems. Now, it wasn't just burning off energy. What they were doing is they were turning their brains on. We worked with another school up in northern Ontario, where uh, the high school, where they had a special class for their 25 bad boys. Uh, they were very disruptive uh, in a bad way and uh, one of the things that they, they had to do was to suspend these children uh, if they were in fights and in, uh, breaking furniture or just disrupting the class too much. So we went in and helped them design a program uh, in, to get all these kids moving and moving vigorously in the morning. And so what you can see on, on the uh, graph here is that the semester before, they had 95 days of suspension of these children. After we started the program, it dropped to five. And then as well, the attendance went up. So these kids came to school, and these were rough kids, came to school to get their, their uh, uh, credits, to, do, to finish their courses, to participate in schools. Now, what happens when we exercise is we turn on our front part of the brain, the last part of the brain, to evolve. This is a part of the brain that's called our CEO of the brain or our uh, prefrontal cortex, where our uh, frontal executive functions are. And when we exercise, when we move, we turn that part of the brain on. As well, we create a lot of neurotransmitters that we aim at it with our psychiatric drugs. And we create another substance that we had just learned about called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotropic factor, which I called miracle Grow for the brain. Because when we fire our nerve cells, we make this stuff, and this keeps our brain cells young and perky. One of the reasons why exercise is one of the best ways to prevent the onset of cognitive de decline and Alzheimer's disease, but it also readies our brain to be plastic. And we know we need to exercise, we know we need to have our brain cells grow to log in any new information. So exercise is a terrific way to improve the learner because it turns on the uh, attention system, it turns on the motivation system, it turns on the memory system, as well as it makes all of our little brain cells ready to, to grow and sprout. And that's the only way we learn anything. Here in California, for the past 12 years, you've tested a million children in grades 5, 7, and 9 every year. This is a representative graph of what it looks like. Uh, in, in, in the, they evaluate them on six different fitness standards. And then uh, the, the graph shows is more and more standards are completed. That, that is, they achieve them. Their test scores, in this case it's math, but it's the same in language arts, their test scores go up. And this is what you see in every single year. So the more fit the child is, the better learner they are. So 
my purpose, my mission is to go around the country and the world to, to tell people, look, exercise makes your brain better. It, make, it optimizes your brain's ability to learn. It, it helps with uh, regulate our, your emotions. It improves your motivation. And it's something that we have unfortunately been taking out of our schools. We need to reinvigorate our schools and get our kids out of their seats uh, and moving. So thank you very much.